Audemix is now available for the Prodigy MP platform as standard in the Unlimited variant and as a paid license for the Advanced and Essential versions. Audemix can be tested in demo mode on any Prodigy MP for 30 minutes, as with all paid licenses. Demo mode can be activated from Settings – License. Audemix is automatically setting the gain values of several flex channels belonging to an Audemix group, starting from DSP flex channels. With a double click on the A button of a flex channel, it is possible to assign it to one of the 16 available Audemix groups. Once assigned, the button color changes to orange and shows A followed by the group member. Let's repeat that for several channels assigning them to different Audemix groups. A flex channel can be assigned to any Audemix group in any order, so select them freely according to your requirements or preferences. Gain decisions are taken for each Audemix group separately, meaning the input levels of flex channels belonging to a specific Audemix group will not affect members outside of that group. Let's make an example. For a Champions League football match commentary, we need to provide four independent mixes – English, Spanish, Italian and German. And each mix includes two microphones – one for the main commentator and the second for the pundit or analyst at his side. From DSP settings Audemix, we name the first four groups – English, Spanish, Italian and German. From Flex Channels, we assign Flex 1 and 2 to A1 English, Flex 3 and 4 to A2 Spanish, Flex 5 and 6 to A3 Italian, Flex 7 and 8 to A4 German. We can now click on Automix and check how each group behaves. Clicking on a channel, all the other channels in the same group are highlighted to see how the Automix algorithm is managing the gain decisions of each member. The level calculated in real time for each channel is shown by the small orange triangles in the meters. The Automix algorithm only controls the level of the flex channels belonging to the Automix group, but is not summing them. The outputs of those flex channels are then ready to be routed to summing buses and or to a mat mix where the actual summing or mixing takes place. Let's say we are happy with just a monosum of each language and no other sound is to be added. The usage of four summing buses sounds like the quickest way to go. So we click on summing buses, we label the first four summing buses with the relevant names, click on assign and complete the routing. Going back to level, we create four floating faders by double clicking the orange icon at the top of each summing bus out of fader. From the Automix tab, we do the same for each Automix group, arranging all the floating windows as we wish, and then store a new layout called Automix. Let's listen to the Automix and investigate how we set it correctly. Having eight presenters on the first eight flex channels, we assign all of them to the Automix group 1. To appreciate the difference between a static or manual mix and the Automix, Let's connect those flex channels to two different mat mixers, routing the default pick-off point of the input style flex channels that have Automix active to the Automix mat mix. We then route the same sources to the static mix mat mix using pick-off point number four between the EQ and the flex channels, which selects the EQ'd signal coming from the microphones but before the Automix so the steady gain version of those signals. We could multi-select the eight input channels of each mat mix and right-click to select Label from Sources to automatically rename them with the labels from their currently routed sources. We then set the level of the input channels to 0 dB on both mat mixes. To quickly handle and listen to those mat mix masters, let's create the two floating faders and put them at the side of our desktop. From the Flex Channel tab, we open the Solo Manager window and activate Phones 1 and Monitor 1, ready to listen to anything we want with a mouse click while keeping the keyboard S for Solo depressed. 
In most situations, each presenter should hear a mix of the presenters in their headphones or earpieces. We therefore need mix minus combined with Automix. Nothing is easier with the Prodigy MP. We assign seven channels each to the first eight summing buses, just skipping the assignment of each presenter's own microphone to his feed. Let's start with all the Automix settings to default values and compare the static mix with the Automix version. Five, seven, two, six, five, three, six, eight, two, six. three. 8277514718318314 The Automix effect is clearly audible with a much lower overall noise floor and a much cleaner and more intelligible mix. But something even better can be done. When the presenter is not talking, his microphone is contributing to the mix with only its self-noise and any background noise it is picking up. And that's true for all the microphones. Let's listen to all the microphones when none of the presenter is talking, starting from the static mix, now the auto mix. It's clear the Automix effect, where all the input signals are more or less at the same level, and therefore the Automix algorithm is lowering each input by 12 dB, thus reducing the overall noise floor of the mix. If we now increase the Hush Wizard setting, we can hear and see the gain calculations reducing the levels of the inputs contributing just noise, thus greatly improving the overall Automix. Hush Wizard must be carefully set and the best level can only be fine-tuned when you have the real rig running, where its level should compete against the noise floor and not against the signals that we want to mix. For example, when the presenters are actually speaking. A good starting point is to let all the inputs capture just the mic noise floor and background noise, then increase the hush wizard level until we see the peak levels of the noise floor disappearing from the meters. At that point, the noise level is barely audible. Let's listen to the difference from the static mix, then the auto mix with Hush Wizard. The result is excellent. Let's listen to the several presenters talking, comparing the static mix, the auto mix, and the auto mix with Hush Wizard. Two, three. Eight two seven seven five one eight three eight one three four three four five two seven six two four five two seven four 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 Eight, four, eight, four, six, three, five, three, 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 six, five, four, three, four, three, five, five, four, three, four, three, five, three, four, three, 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 three. Be careful with the hush wizard level. If set too high, it would consider noise even signals with high levels, thus not helping the overall auto mix, as can be clearly heard in the following example. Five, two, four, seven, three, three, five, seven, five, seven, eight, four, two. If we want the moderator's microphone to win over the others, we can set its priority by settings and appropriate dB offset. To do that, click on the relevant button from the Automix tab or on the green button on each flex channel. The priority of each channel can be set from 0, default value, up to 18 dB. It's important to notice the priority helps the moderator microphone to be louder than others when the moderator is actually talking, but not influencing the rest of the auto mix when silent. When some of the inputs need to be treated differently, for example background music or sound effects from the field of play, and should not get as much as gain reduction as the other channels, we can define a smaller percentage of the automix effect, altering the default value 100%.
of the contribution. With contribution set to 50, an original gain reduction decision of 20 dB will actually be applied by only the 50% of that value. Gain is not an automix parameter, but the classic manual fader position remains available for each flex channel. When a flex channel is assigned to an automix group, the gain represents a manual offset, which will be applied on top of the automix decisions. That's very useful to tune the required level of each flex channel without being forced to alter the automix settings or input levels. Gain settings are available even when the automix tab is displayed to ease the whole management of the mix. If the user wants to focus on the automix calculations only, the gains fader could be hidden by clicking on the gain central button or on the black button on the channel. A further click will show them again. Behavior sets how fast the automix reacts to level changes. Eight different steps are offered, from one fast to eight slow. The fault value is one fast, guaranteeing not even the first syllable spoken by any presenter is lost in the mix. The user can set slower values to have smoother gain change. For example, when automixing strings, live instruments, or when the conversation is lower paced and less lively. A new scope area has been added to handle automix parameters, divided in two scope details, channels and groups. The user can decide to include individual channels or individual group parameters to the snapshot scope set. Just click on the relevant rectangle during a scope set edit.